In this part, we'll watch a mechanic reassemble a two-screw rotary pump. Although the pumps you work on may be different, the basic principles we'll cover will still apply. Just make sure that you follow your company's specific procedures. Before you start to reassemble a pump, you need to make some preparations. These preparations include four important steps. First, check the pump manufacturer's manual to see if there are any special precautions or procedures that apply to reassembling the pump. For instance, you might have to reassemble components in a particular order, or you might have to check specific clearances after the pump is reassembled. Second, make sure that all replacement components have been ordered and received. When replacement components arrive, inspect them carefully. You may have to use precision measuring tools such as feeler gauges or dial indicators to make sure that the replacement components conform to the manufacturer's specifications. Another preparation step is making sure that all of the disassembled pump components are gathered together and have been thoroughly cleaned and inspected. And finally, gather all the tools and materials that you'll need for the reassembly process. All materials, such as gaskets and lubricants, should be of a type recommended by the manufacturer. Gaskets must be compatible with the fluid to be pumped, and they must be the correct thickness. This mechanic has completed all the necessary preparations, and he's ready to start reassembling the pump. He'll begin by installing the flange bolts that he removed earlier. The next step is to replace the mechanical seals on the inboard end of both shafts. To make sure that the seals are positioned correctly, the mechanic relies on measurements that were taken during the pump disassembly. These measurements are used to place each mechanical seal the proper distance from the end of its shaft. After the mechanic puts each mechanical seal in the correct position, he tightens the set screws that hold each seal in place. He is extremely careful to keep dirt, moisture, and skin acids from contacting the sealing surfaces. The rotors are installed next. Before the mechanic inserts the rotors into the casing, he uses a clean, lint-free cloth to apply a coating of clean, light oil to the entire inside surface of the bore. As he installs the rotors, the mechanic makes sure that they're properly aligned with each other. He holds them close together and is careful not to bump them against the lip of the casing. He does not slide the rotors all the way in so that he can install the outboard mechanical seals. The outboard mechanical seals are installed in the same manner as the inboard seals. After he's sure that the seals are in the correct positions, he tightens the set screws that hold the seals in place. Once the outboard mechanical seals have been installed, the mechanic slides the rotors the rest of the way into the pump. After the rotors are in place, the mechanic installs a gasket over the flange bolts on the outboard end of the pump. The mechanic moves on to installing the outboard bearing bracket. He begins this step by lubricating the flange bolts. The flange bolts are lubricated to prevent the bearing bracket nuts from binding or wearing away by friction as they're turned, to help prevent corrosion, and to make later removal of the bearing bracket nuts easier. Only a lubricant recommended by the manufacturer should be used. The mechanic carefully guides the outboard bearing bracket and its gasket over the flange bolt threads. When the bracket is against the end of the casing, he installs the top two bearing bracket nuts and makes them finger tight. These two nuts will hold the bracket in place while the alignment dowel pins and the other bracket nuts are installed. Before he puts on any other bracket nuts, the mechanic inserts an alignment dowel pin into a guide hole in each side of the bracket. He then uses a small hammer to tap each pin until it fits snugly into position. When the bracket is properly lined up with the casing, the mechanic installs the remaining bracket nuts finger tight. The mechanic follows the pump manufacturer's recommended tightening procedure to tighten the nuts in a cross-torque pattern using a torque wrench. Here's an example of a cross-torque tightening pattern. The numbers on the pattern correspond to the order in which the nut should be tightened. Using a pattern like this one and a torque wrench 
helps the mechanic ensure that the gasket is compressed evenly and that a tight seal is formed between the bearing bracket and the pump's casing. The next part of the reassembly procedure is reinstalling the timing gears. To ensure that the timing gears seat properly and that there's no dirt or grit on the shafts to interfere with the timing gears or the bearings, the mechanic uses a non-abrasive cleaning pad to clean the shafts down to the bare metal. Since using the cleaning pad can create tiny particles that could work their way into a bearing, he then cleans the shafts thoroughly with solvent. He then dries them with a clean, lint-free cloth. Next, the mechanic lubricates the areas of the shafts where the timing gears will be installed. He does this by rubbing them with a cloth that has an approved lubricant on it. After that, he reinstalls the two washers that he removed earlier. Then he sets the keys in the keyways on both shafts. Next, he installs the timing gears. He makes sure that he slides them onto the shafts together to avoid damaging the gear teeth. He matches the witness marks to make sure that the gears are properly aligned and he positions the keyways on the inside diameter of the gears to match the positions of the keys on the shafts. After the timing gears are in place, the mechanic installs the spacer on each shaft. Next, he installs the bearings in the timing gear housing. Then he installs the timing gear housing with a new gasket. To secure the timing gears in position, the mechanic slips a lock washer into place against the spacer on each shaft and then finger tightens a retaining nut against each lock washer. He uses a hammer and a pin punch to fully tighten both retaining nuts. An ear of each lock washer is folded against a groove in the edge of the corresponding retaining nut. After installing the timing gear housing plates, he tightens the set screws that hold them in place. The last component to be installed is the inboard end bell. The mechanic carefully slides the end bell and its gasket over the two shafts. Then he installs the nuts and bolts that hold the end bell in place. He tightens them until they're finger tight. Then, as he did before, the mechanic uses a torque wrench and a cross torque pattern to tighten the nuts and bolts to make sure that the gasket is evenly tightened and that a tight seal is formed between the end bell and the inboard bearing bracket. After the pump is completely reassembled, the mechanic turns the rotors to make sure that they turn freely without rubbing. This pump is not being returned to service right away, so the mechanic does not have to fill each oil reservoir. He'll finish his part of this job by picking up his tools and making sure that the work area is clean. Try a question now to make sure that you understand the material that we've covered. In this topic, we watched a mechanic clean and inspect the components of a two-screw rotary pump, and then we saw him reassemble the pump. Take some time now to try a couple of practice questions. Before any action is taken to remove or disassemble a pump, the pump must be locked out and tagged in accordance with your company's procedures. Lockout and tagout procedures are designed to ensure that equipment cannot operate while it is being worked on. Several tasks need to be performed before the timing gears can be removed. First, the mechanic removes the spacer on each shaft. After he makes a witness mark across the two gears so that the gears can be reinstalled properly, he uses a gear puller to move the driver gear along the shaft until it can move easily. Then he uses the gear puller to move the driven gear until it is alongside the driver gear. The timing gears are removed the rest of the way by hand and put in the parts pan. To protect the rotors during their removal, the mechanic follows three basic guidelines. First, he pulls the rotors out of the casing together. Second, he holds the rotors firmly together as they slide out of the casing to keep them from shifting. And third, he makes sure that the rotors are adequately supported until he sets them down. Inspecting a rotor involves more than just a surface inspection. The mechanic also has to check each rotor to make sure that it is not bent or out of round. These checks can be made at several points along the length of the rotor using a dial indicator.
To check each rotor, a dial indicator is mounted so that its stem presses slightly against the surface of the rotor. After setting the dial indicator to zero, the mechanic rotates the rotor as he watches the face of the dial. If the pointer moves slowly away from zero and then back again, the rotor might have to be replaced depending on the rotor specifications. If the pointer flickers very quickly at any point, there could be a burr or a dent at that location. Small burrs or dents can be removed without having to replace the shaft. When a mechanic installs timing gears, he should make sure that he slides them onto the shafts together to avoid damaging the gear teeth. He should also match the witness marks to make sure that the gears are properly aligned. He should also position the keyways on the inside diameter of the gears to match the positions of the keys on the shafts.